A Raman map is acquired by collecting a sequence of spectra over a, an area of a sample and recording both the spectral intensities and the stage position as the map is performed. And as a result, there's a relationship between a set of images and a set of spectra. These data sets may appear noisy on an individual pixel basis, but when you sum all the pixels in terms of spectra, you obtain quite a respectable signal to noise in a, in a survey spectrum. And the idea is that we're going to link peaks that you can see in the Raman spectra with pixels within a map. And in order to improve the signal to noise in the maps that we will create, these spectra will be integrated over intervals, that's quantification intervals, after background subtraction. So the exercise that we're now going through is the creation of a set of regions for each one of the spectral features. And the idea is that once we've identified a peak, we can integrate over that peak and assign an intensity to each pixel based on that region. So we end up with a set of images, one per region that we define on the pixel spectra. So we're using the element library to create these regions. And we should end up with one region per spectral feature. And you can see that some of these spectral features have component information. So you could do this by peak fitting, but you end up with a set of images. And from these images, you can calculate an image set of intensities, which you can partition as a false color image. And each color within the image, can you can sum a spectrum. And from the set of spectra that you get from the false colors, you can calculate the fundamental components. That is to say, vectors that if you combine in a linearly square sense, can reproduce all the spectra that have been acquired. So once we have these regions and we've verified that the backgrounds are in the right place and we've gone through and organized the regions, given them names, make sure the relative sensitivity factor is one in this case. We're not interested in the actual atomic concentration. We're wanting to normalize only the intensities. So we will set up these regions on the survey spectrum and then we'll return to the spectra at pixels and propagate from this survey spectrum with the regions to each of the spectra at pixels from this map. So we'll first of all do a little bit of signal enhancement here. These spectra are noisy because the acquisition time has been split across many pixels. But we can use that acquisition time using principal component analysis to improve the signal to noise in each individual spectrum. So there's an element of mathematics involved here. But the idea is that you obtain a set of spectra that look similar to the total spectrum from this data set and the signal to noise is a little worse after doing a calculation with 20 abstract factors but the spectral features will be there and the backgrounds calculated so we can calculate from each one of these spectra pixels after PCA enhancement a set of images where the signal to noise will be better than if we didn't do the PCA and we'll normalize the peak area images and this emphasizes at least in this first image a vein which we can examine and we can see it better by smoothing in fact this first one is turning out to be quite good that it's got a, a band of intensities it's got a on the left hand side you have low intensities and then you have a range of intensities across the rest of the image and this will provide at least a first look at how this image relates to spectra by using false colors to partition the pixels according to intensity. We'll use the color scale property page, indicate a range of intensities and set up a false color range. We'll use 12 colors 
histogram equalization and we will then partition the pixels according to these lookup table indices so there are going to be 12 different indices in this colors map and once we've defined this as the template that we're going to use we can go back to the spectra pixels in fact we'll go back to the raw spectra pixels we won't use the the PCA enhanced ones we will use the raw data so there are no artifacts from the mathematics these are simply a sum of the spectra of pixels based on the different pixel colors if you do a PCA on these 12 well you can get an idea of how many fundamental shapes are within the data set and you can see that there are spectral features from these 12 spectra that are probably up to about five or six abstract factors where there might be spectral features so we're going to look for six different vectors that we can use to reconstruct the entire data set on the basis that the PCA suggested that there were up to six different shapes within these data and what we'll do is we'll select two and we'll do this by way of illustration rather than the full analysis which takes some time so we will look at a pair of spectra the first two in this case and we'll look at differences between them and after we've organized the data set we can start scanning through these and trying to reduce the influence of one of these sets of peaks compared to the other so we end up with two spectral shapes that in a mathematical sense have a, a larger angle between them than the original pair and the idea is to come up with spectral features that won't necessarily be orthogonal that would be a characteristic of abstract factors from a principal component analysis but they will be as wide apart as possible that that's we're looking for linear independence of spectral shapes so once we've got vectors that look like spectral shapes we will gather them and collect these two forms into the data set containing the lookup table spectra this is the working file that is used to calculate these these new component shapes so having moved the, the new component the calculated component spectral forms into the lookup table file we'll just do a little bit of bookkeeping and reorganize based on the element transition fields the vectors that we either processed or are the result of the processing so these are the two that original spectra and these are the two process ones and you can see there's greater variation in the two process ones and that's the objective and you could repeat this operation and keep working on different pairs of spectra and working on the results of the pairs of spectra until you end up with six vectors that you can overlay in the active tile and then you can see how well these reproduce the lookup table data using the linear analysis section on the PCA property page and the result is each one of the spectra the lookup table spectra that were not used in the calculation are decomposed by the components that were calculated from other spectra and if we're reproducing these reasonably well and we are it suggests that we have done a reasonable job of finding spectral features that are characteristic of this material and when we look at these you can see that the job isn't quite done yet because there are at least two of them that are very similar and with a bit more work you can identify six components that are representative of this type of material